Hello and welcome to my next video on meiosis. Meiosis is a reduction division. The resulting daughter cells have half the original number of chromosomes. They are haploid and can be used for sexual reproduction. Now this means that you start off with a normal cell which has 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. And then this number will be halved to just 23 chromosomes. These are haploid cells, they're called gametes. Now these cells are genetically unidentical. Then, so mitosis produces genetically identical cells, meiosis produces unidentical. And this is very important in sexual reproduction. Meiosis one, now just before meiosis actually starts occurring, interphase occurs. Now this is when the DNA replicates. As a result, chromosomes, um, there's, chromosomes consist of two identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere. The cell now contains four rather than the original two copies of each chromosome. So what happens? Prophase one. Chromosomes condense, they undergo supercoiling, so the chromosomes shorten and thicken. They can take up stains and can be seen with a light microscope. Same as prophase in in mitosis. Now, the chromosomes come together in their homologous pairs to form a bivalent. Each member of the pair has the same genes at the same loci. Each pair consists of a maternal and one paternal chromosome. Now, a loci is the position of a gene on the chromosome, just so you know. But these bivalents, two chromosomes, and they basically have the same genes, one's to fathers, one's to mothers. Now, non-sister chromatids wrap around each other. Now, sister chromatids are, two, are the two long thin bits on each chromosome so you have one well if you look at the little diagram I've given here you can see the X now if you look at well e either of the chromosomes is fine you have one non well the sister chromatids are half of the X's so one half of an X is one sister chromatid non sister chromatids are ones on different chromosomes so as you can see chromatids from two of the chromosomes are wrapping around each other at some are called a chiasmata or chiasma for singular. They may swap sections of the chromatids with one another in a process called crossing over. So this means if you have, let's say, um, on one chromosome you have A1, B1, C1, chromosome 2 you have A2, B2, C2, all at the same position but just different forms of that gene. Now it might cross over at point C and swap over. So you've now got on chromosome 1 A1, B1, C2 and on chromosome 2 you have A2, B2, C1. So you swap genes. Um, also just like in normal prophase of mitosis the nucleolus disappears and the nuclear envelope disintegrates. A spindle forms is made of mi protein microtubules um, and this is from the uh, centrioles. Metaphase 1 Bivalence, so that's the pairs of the chromosomes, line up across the equator. So, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a bit in a few slides, but think of the equator will have one chromosome either side. The bivalents are arranged randomly in random assortion. So, if we again think of, let's say there are three chromosomes in this organism, you have the fathers, which is A1, B1, C1, and then you have the mothers, which is A1, B1, a2, B2, C2, sorry. And then it could be sorted in any way. So it could be A1, B2, C1, A1, B2, C2, A1, B1, C1, all those different combinations on one side of the equator with the others on the other side. The spindles attached to the centromeres on a chromosome. In anaphase one, one chromosome in, in each pair is pulled to opposite poles. So you have two chromosomes, one's pulled to one pole, one is pulled to the other. So unlike mitosis where a chromosome splits in two into the chromatids, the whole chromosome is pulled to the pole. It's also important to mention that the chiasmata separate and the lengths of the chromatid that have been crossed over remain with the chromatid to which they become newly attached. So up until anaphase, the crossing over, they are still there. They're, when you saw those two X's crossed over, it still looks like that. Then anaphase, the actual genes are swapped. And then telophase, now this doesn't always happen, it usually happens in animal cells rather than plant cells. Two new nuclear envelopes form, cytokinesis occurs, you've basically got two new cells. 
Now, meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis. So meiosis 2 is similar to mitosis. Why I say this is because it pretty much is. You have, I, I will very quickly explain it, but I suggest watch my cell on cellular division and um, whatever the video is called. Um, you, so you have, now this is prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2. In prophase 2, the nuclear envelope has reformed, but it breaks down again. The nucleolus disappears. Chromosomes consent and spindles form, just like it happens in all prophases. Metaphase, the chromosomes arrange themselves on the equator of the spindle, just like they do in um, metaphase and mitosis. They attach to the spindle microtubules at the centromere. Now, the other thing to mention here is that the chromatids, so not chromosomes, but the chromatids of each chromosome are randomly assorted again. So, on one chromosome, you can have, you know, sister chromatid A, sister chromatid B. It can be either side of the equator, and it happens for each chromosome, so you get more randomness. Then, the centromere is divided in anaphase 2, and the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles by spindle fibers. The chromatids randomly seg segregate. A similar idea that basically it's random for which um, chromatids go to which pole. And in telophase 2, nuclear envelope reforms around the haploid daughter nuclei. In animals, the two cells now divide to give four haploids. In plants, a tetrad of four haploids is formed. So, what actually happens in meiosis? You start off with, well, I haven't shown it quite on this little timeline, but you start off with just a normal cell, number of chromosomes 2n, n being 23, because it's got 23 pairs, so 2n. Then the DNA replicates, you've now got two lots of 2n. So instead of having um, 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, you've got 46 chromosomes or 92 chromosomes, or so 46 pairs, 92 chromosomes. Then during meiosis 1, the chromosomes are split apart, the pairs l are gone. So this time, instead of having 2n, which is a you know one is 23 pairs, you now have 2 times n. So you have two lots of 23 individual chromosomes. So 46 chromosomes not in pairs. And during meiosis 2, the number's halved, so you just have n, which is 23 chromosomes. And here is the diagrams. I've only shown the meiosis 1 because yet again as I said meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis so you can watch another video for that. So here I've just drawn two chromosomes, the shorter one and the taller one. Prophase 1 you can see the nuclear envelope disintegrating, the bivalents have formed. Um, now in this diagram I haven't shown any crossing over because without using colours is not too much point but you've seen what crossing over does earlier. You can see the two little dots either side of the uh, nuclear envelope. That is the um, spindle fibres forming. I've just seen this. I've made it a little bit confusing because the nuclear envelope is exactly the same as the spindles. Whoops. Uh, don't worry about that. In prophase one, nuclear envelope. Metaphase one, no nuclear envelope. Those the dashed lines are the spindles. As you can see, they come from the centriole to attach at the centromere of the each chromosome. That's right at the centre of the X. In anaphase 2, you can see they're separated, the bivalents are separated, so there's one little x either side at each pole and one big x at each pole. And telophase, you can see nuclear envelope reforming cell splits. So, I hope that makes sense. So, genetic variation. What causes genetic variation? Now, there are a number of ways genetic variation is caused. You have crossing over, as we said, um, random assortment of both chromosomes in meiosis 1 and chromatids in meiosis 2. You have random mutations and you have fertilization. This all leads to genetic variation. So crossing over, you have one maternal chromosome and one paternal chromosome. These contain alleles, which are different forms of the same gene. So for eye color, blue is one form, brown is another. A bit of the non sister chromatids swap over. So some genes have different combinations of alleles. As we said before, you know, you can have A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2 crosses over and you get, a, you know, a much different, com or many different combinations. So that leads to genetic variation. Random assortment of chromosomes. This is in, now this is in metaphase one. Different combinations of paternal and maternal chromosomes. This is, you can have them in either side of the equator and that applies for each of the chromosomes down the line and I think at, at my school we work, we just did work out how many it is and it's like 8 million different combinations of all the chromosomes. Now linkage occurs. What is linkage? 
We will look at linkage in the next video, but linkage basically refers to two or more genes that are located on the same chromosome. The linked alleles of these genes are normally inherited together because they do not segregate independently at meiosis, unless a chiasmata is formed between them. So basically, these different chromosomes will be inherited together. It's, you don't need to know about that in too much detail. We'll go on to it in the next video, essentially. So random assortment is the exact same idea with the random assortment of chromosomes. Chromatids, same idea, you've got different you know, options across the equator. Mutations can also lead to variation. If you watch a cellular control video, you'll see how they can lead it to get different base sequences. Also, fertilization can lead to genetic variation. You know, if you have you know a million sperm with one egg, there's a million different combinations of DNA that could go into the egg. So you get a lot of different variation there. So in conclusion, meiosis leads to variation. Now, if you want to remember the order, especially for any physicist, it would help. Remember PMAT. Meiosis 1, you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 1. Meiosis 2, you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 2. Variation is caused by crossing over, random assortment of chromosomes and chromosids, and mutation. So thank you for watching. As usual, if you have any questions, just you know, email me or leave a comment, like, blah, 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 blah. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.